Hey everybody, and welcome back to Enemy Archives, where enemies from the Zelda series are brought into the light. If you didn't click on this video accidentally, you've probably realized that we're going to be talking about a bunch of bosses today. Any reptile boss we haven't already covered yet is fair game, though I'll try not to linger too long on any of them. If you're looking for any of these bosses, skip to this timestamp and I'll show you some videos that feature these guys specifically. Once you're finished with this video, be sure to comment on which boss is your favorite, because there's a lot to go over this time. Now, let's get started with the finale of Enemy Archives Reptiles. Aquamentus, the very first reptilian boss of the series, is the boss of level 1 from The Legend of Zelda. This beast appears to be some sort of dragon crossed with a... unicorn? Anyway, Aquamentus is a formidable opponent early on, as it can shoot fireballs as well as deal damage on contact. Thankfully, Aquamentus only moves vertically, making it pretty easy for Link to use a hit-and-run strategy. But wait! Aquamentus reappeared in Oracle of Seasons in the Gnarled Root Dungeon, and this time it learned a new trick. That trick being charging to the left, which could hit Link if he didn't act fast. This attack is pretty much the only difference between this Aquamentus and the original, but it's still a neat upgrade. Second in the scaly spotlight comes Gleok, a massive multi-headed monster resembling a dragon. It's likely that Gleok is a species rather than a specific creature, but for simplicity will act like it's one boss. This enemy appears in three games, The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Seasons, and Phantom Hourglass. In the first game, it appears three times, gaining an extra head for each appearance. To defeat Gleok, you must sever all of its heads from its body, dodging fireballs all the while. Oracle of Seasons added a few twists to the Gleok battle. Once you sever a head, you must quickly destroy it before it reconnects to the body. Also, after defeating all the heads, Gleok's skeleton will continue to attack Link until he totally destroys it. Gleok from Phantom Hourglass totally mixes things up, with one head breathing fire and the other spitting ice. Link must use the grappling hook to return the dragon breath, as well as dodge falling chunks of ice and floods. With multiple heads, fireballs, and the occasional skeleton battle, this boss is quite the challenge. Next up, we have the Glee Rock, which may or may not be a one-headed Gleok with a big rock on its back. This beast appears in the Minish Cap as the boss of the Cave of Flames. Glee Rock uses all manner of fire and rock attacks to thwart Link's plans. If Link can manage to shoot Glee Rock's back with the cane of Pass Pass Passi? Passi? Packy? The cane that flips things over, Glee Rock will show his weak point for Link to attack. Just be careful, as Glee Rock will frequently unleash massive waves of flames and there's a good chance you'll get hit by some falling rocks. Another boss from A Link to the Past, Trinex, is a massive beast with three necks. And three heads. This enemy is a dangerous opponent fought in A Link to the Past, where it dominates Turtle Rock. Makes sense, because Trinex is a turtle, right? Well, we'll see. Trinex is weak to two particular items, the Ice Rod and the Fire Rod. Each rod can be used on one of its heads, though using these attacks consumes a lot of magic power. Link has to either be well prepared or aim very well. After defeating the two elemental heads, Trinex will break free from its shell, revealing itself as a large snake-like monster. Link must strike this monster's weak point three times to win, which is actually a lot harder than it sounds. That's not all, folks. There's another giant turtley monster out there in A Link Between Worlds. This guy is the creatively named Grinex, who shows up in, you guessed it, Turtle Rock. Thankfully, this boss only has one head, but he more than makes up for that by swimming around in lava. Link must hit Grinex with the Ice Rod to stop his attacks, which in the process deals damage to him. Soon, Grinex will jump out of the lava, and Link must face him face to face. In this phase, Grinex will sometimes leave his head open to attacks, which is when Link must strike. Deal enough damage, and you can wipe that grin right off his necks. Now, for everyone's favorite boss, 
he's the boss of a dungeon, he's a dragon, and he's quite long. Give it up for... Barba. Huh? Who, who are you expecting? Anyway, Barba is the boss of a palace from Zelda 2, where he sits way out of reach of Link's sword. Barba breathes fire from a safe distance, sometimes submerging himself in lava. Thankfully, Link can use the Jump spell to increase his range, making this battle possible. After hitting Barba on the head several times, the dragon will make his way into history. I know we just covered a pretty important boss, so don't get too excited about this one. Next in the list we have Volvagia, the subterranean lava dragon from Ocarina of Time. This massive worm ducks in and out of several holes around the room, frequently spitting flames down onto Link. To fight back, Link needs to use the Megaton Hammer on Volvagia's head, which only pops out of the ground occasionally. After hitting the head, Volvagia will begin to fly around, and after some attacks the process will repeat itself. If Link can deal enough damage between the falling rocks and the fire attacks, Volvagia will cease to threaten the Gorons once and for all. Have you had your fill of dragons? Well, I haven't, so how about we check out one more? For our last boss, we're talking about the Twilight Dragon, Argorok. Argorok appears in Twilight Princess atop the City in the Sky. Once Link reaches the top, he makes a dramatic entrance, and the fight begins. The key items in this fight are the Claw Shots, which can be used to grip onto Argorok's tail. The first stage of the battle isn't too hard, as Argorok mostly flies around until he gets close to Link. This opens up his tail for a Claw Shot grab, which with the help of the Iron Boots will knock off some of Argorok's armor. Doing this twice will get him really riled up, and the pea hats around the arena will suddenly pop out. Now, Argorok will unleash a massive stream of fire, forcing Link to claw shot around the circle of pea hats to escape. If successful, Link can then grab onto Argorok's back and deal some damage. A few rounds of this flaming fight, and the Twilight Dragon will be reduced to embers. A few other bosses we've already covered in this series are King Dodongo, Big Dodongo, Helmosaur King, and Jimasaur King, and they can be found in the rest of the Enemy Archives playlist. If you've got the time, go check them all out, they're really neat bosses. Anyway, thank you all for watching the Reptile series finale. There won't be any more Enemy Archives for a little while as I'll be working on some other things, but I'll get back to this series before too long. I hope. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time you're in the Legend Zone.